Hi, Bible students. When we last left Moses, he was on the mountain of God and God was telling him, I'm going to use you to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. And Moses gave a bunch of excuses why he wouldn't do it. But God was kind and gracious to him and he gave him three miracles to do. And he said, bring your brother along with you and I'm going to use you to help my people leave Egypt. So kind of reluctantly, Moses and Aaron go and they go to talk to Pharaoh. So I'm in Exodus chapter five in the Bible. Uh, verse one says, afterward, Moses and Aaron went with Pharaoh and said to him, thus says the Lord God of Israel, let my people go so that they can hold a feast for me in the wilderness. But Pharaoh said, who is the Lord? Why should I obey his voice? Why should I let Israel go? I do not know the Lord. Hmm. It's true that Pharaoh didn't know the Lord. Pharaoh and the Egyptians, they worshiped many gods. They had a plethora of gods. There was a God to everything. And Moses didn't know anything about the one true God. Then they said, the God of the Hebrews has met with us. Please let us go three days journey into the wilderness so we can sacrifice to the Lord God. Eventually, Moses says, no, not doing it. And he was so mad, as a matter of fact, that when Moses and Aaron left him, he called in the taskmasters and he said, listen, they're getting a little wiggy. They think they're going to get to leave and go worship their God on a mountain. Let's make their lives miserable. And he doubled the amount of work they had to do, the amount of bricks they had to make, but he cut their supplies in half. When that happened, of course, the Israelites were like really frustrated. They were not able to do what Moses, uh, what Pharaoh told them to do. And so they found Moses and Aaron. And at the end of chapter five, it says they met Moses and Aaron who were waiting for them as they came out of Pharaoh. And they said to them, the Lord look on you and judge because you have made a stink in the sight of Pharaoh and his servants. They've, you've put a sword in their hand to kill us. So not only is Pharaoh extra mad at Moses now, and now the people of Israel are extra mad at Moses. And Moses, again, feels like he's in a no-win situation. God speaks to Moses and he speaks to Aaron and he reconfirms his promises to him in chapter 6. And then God says, all right, boys, chapter 7. You remember how I said before, like it's going to take a strong hand and act of God to convince Pharaoh to let you go? Now's the time. So in chapter 7, God sends Moses and Aaron back to Pharaoh. He tells them in verse 7, Pharaoh will not listen to you. And I will lay my hand on Egypt and I will bring my people out. In verse 6, it said, Moses and Aaron did what God said. And now Moses was 80 years old and Aaron was 83 years old when they spoke to Pharaoh. So these are not young guys. These are, these are mature men. Um, when they go to Moses, when Moses and Aaron go to Pharaoh, he says, hey, let my people go. And Pharaoh's like, again, I don't know why you're here. We've already said this. It's not happening. Why should I listen to your God? And that's when Moses did the first miracle. He put the, he threw down his staff and it turned into a snake. Um, so Moses and Aaron did what the Lord commanded it. Aaron cast down the staff before Pharaoh and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh summoned his wise men and sorcerers and magicians. And they, they did the same thing with their secret arts. So the wizards throw down their staffs and they turn into serpents too. That doesn't sound so cool. I thought that was a cool trick, but then everybody else can do the trick too. It's not that cool. For each man cast down his staff and they became serpents, but Aaron's staff swallowed up all the other staffs, yet Pharaoh's heart was still hardened. You're going to see that phrase, Pharaoh's heart was still hardened throughout this, um, this section because God would do something miraculous and Pharaoh would pay attention to it and then he would harden his heart. He'd go, I don't want to do this. I don't care. Let's talk about these plagues that God is going to bring about on the land of Egypt, okay? Each one of the plagues that that Moses that God does through Moses, it pokes fun and it pokes a hole in one of the gods that the Egyptians worship. God is do, using these miracles to tell the people about himself and to show that he and to accomplish his purposes. So miracles have two purposes. They show people who God is and they accomplish God's purpose on the earth. I'm looking at verse 14 in chapter 7. The Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh this morning as he is going out to the water. Stand on the bank of the Nile and meet him. Take in your hand the staff that turned into a serpent and you will say to him, The Lord the God of the Hebrews sent me saying, Let my people go. 
but so far you have not obeyed. Thus says the Lord, by this you will know that I am the Lord. Behold, the staff that is in my hand, I will strike the water that is in the Nile, and it will turn to blood. The fish will die, the Nile will stink. So imagine this. Pharaoh is getting his spa treatment, taking a bath in the Nile River. Moses stands on the banks and goes, yo, God said to let the people go, and you're hardening your heart, so this is what God's going to do instead. And he hits the Nile River, and the Nile River that Pharaoh is standing in turns to blood. And if you think about it, like, animals can't live in blood. They live in water. And so all the animals start dying. And this Nile River that's feeding all of the land of Egypt, nothing's living, and it stinks. So you've got all of these fish and everything dying, and it stinks. It's like that for seven days. But Pharaoh still hardens his heart. He still says, we're not going to do it. Okay? So after the blood, the water in the Nile turns back to water, <clears throat> Moses and Aaron go back to Pharaoh, and in chapter 8, um, he says, hey, God's going to bring frogs on the people. So suddenly, out of the Nile River, frogs come, and frogs are covering everything. Like, everything you touch is frogs. Like, imagine you're walking through school, you open your locker, and frogs jump out. You go to sit down in your desk, and there's frogs on the chair. You go to go in the lunchroom, you've got to wipe frogs off the table. There's frogs everywhere. Again, this is like poking fun at these different gods. I hope that you're on page 36 in your book and you're starting to write in the notes that are on, that you see on the screen. The first, the water to blood, is poking at the Nile god. His name is Hapi. The frog plague is, is poking fun at Hecht, the god of fertility. They worshipped a frog. A frog god. It's weird. Um, so, but there's frogs everywhere. After seven days of frogs, uh, Pharaoh calls Moses and Aaron in and goes, okay, get rid of the frogs. We're done with the frogs. Please get rid of the frogs. I'll let the people go. Just ask your God to get rid of the frogs. So Moses and Aaron are like, hey, he's going to let us go. Sweet. So they go out, they pray to God. And they're like, hey, can you let the frogs go? And God says, yes. So then they pile up, all the frogs just die. And they pile up these bodies of dead frogs. And the bodies of dead frogs stink, but they're not hopping all over the place. So Moses and Aaron are like, sweet, hey, we prayed to God. All the frogs stopped. We're going to let the people go. And Pharaoh hardens his heart again. He's like, yeah, no, not doing it. So after that, um, Moses says, you're not going to let the people go? Fine. God's going to send lice or gnats. So there's gnats, little tiny bugs crawling all over everything. And this is to poke fun at Geb, the earth god. And then he says, fine, make the gnats go away. I'll let the people go. And then he changes his mind. After that, um, Moses calls in flies. So there's flies swarming everywhere. Um, it says in Exodus 8 that they, that they make everything like look black because it's covered. Everything's covered with these flies. And this is kind of poking fun at Scarab, the god of eternal life. Um, I think this is the, this is the god that they talk about in some of the movies, um, about Egypt. The, I can't remember the name of the movie, but it's poking fun at this God. In Exodus 9, they go back and they say, hey, we're going to let, we're going to, you need to let the people go, Pharaoh. And he's like, yeah, no, not going to do it. Pharaoh hardens his heart again. And then they put a disease on all the cattle. So these cattle become diseased and then they all die. So imagine like herds of cattle just falling out dead and because they're sick, their flesh starts rotting and everything smells. So you got rid of the flies from the first thing and now the cattle's dead and now there's more flies. And this is poking fun at Apis, their god Apis, who is the black bull god. After that, oh, I forgot to tell you, the whole time all of these things are happening, the, the plagues are everywhere where Egyptians lived. But they're not where the Israelites were living. They call the, the place where the Israelites are living the land of Goshen. So you see that kind of throughout Exodus 7, 8, and 9, and all the way like to 12. These plagues are not affecting the Israelites, which kind of make Pharaoh mad because he's like, it's affecting us, but not them. Um, yeah, so that's funny. All right, so after that, boils. So all of the Egyptians get these open wounds that they're scraping and they're scratching and they're itching. And so the, what this does is now the priests cannot serve all the false gods because of their illness and because of having open sores. Um, and still, Pharaoh hardens his heart. All right, after this, 
God says there's going to be hail. So hail, we know, is flying chunks of ice, and it ruins all of their crops. Um, the Egyptians worship Isis and Osiris. These are rain gods. They pray to the rain gods, and then that's what's supposed to make their ground fertile where they can um, have food. And now their rain gods are, instead of sending things that are helpful for the crops, they're sending hail, which destroys all the crops. And after the crops are all knocked down, Moses is like, hey, you're going to let the people go now? And Pharaoh hardens his heart again and says no. So God sends locusts. So anything that was left standing was eaten by locusts. So they've gone from having this rich, full crop and cattle. Now all the cattle are dead. All of the crops are dead. Everything's dead. Um, and then the crazy one is nine, darkness. So Moses goes and says, hey, let the people go. And Pharaoh hardens his heart again and was like, no. And then it says that he brings darkness. They say in the Bible in Exodus 10, verse around 20 and 21, they say that it's so dark that if you put your hand in front of your face, you couldn't see it. So it was a complete absence of light, except for the land where the Israelites were. Thanks, God. Okay. Um, and so those are the first nine plagues. We're going to talk about the last plague, the death of the firstborn tomorrow, because it also pokes fun at an Egyptian God, but it points in a really, really special way to the one true God.